Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb. My name is Ko, and today we're gonna be talking about the one, two, three go grinder we're gonna do an in-depth review we did an unboxing before and kind of a little demo but we've been using it for six months now and I have a lot of thoughts about it so we'll get into all that stuff later but first let's talk specifically about grind quality and the grinder itself and how it differs from the time more uh, c2 grinder and uh, I think that this is kind of the starting point for all consumer level grinders if you're gonna be grinding at home don't get anything that's cheaper. It has a lot of good range of grind sizes when you're talking about what you can use it for. You can use it for a filter, you can use it for espresso, and that's one of the main things that we wanna talk about in the difference between this grinder and this grinder. Specifically about the burrs. This gold one is covered in titanium, so it's just titanium coated. It's not entirely titanium, and supposedly that is good for longevity. It doesn't really affect the grind quality itself. The main difference between the two is that the EB burrs have these little teeth up here near the top of the burr, whereas the regular ones are just smooth on that section. And having the titanium, I guess, makes it strong enough to be able to withstand um, the milling there and makes it a bit more survivable. And you'd think that this burr being the one that's inside of the Go Grinder, you'd be able to do espresso but you actually can't. And to show you, I've ground some coffee, 10 grams of coffee in each of these grinders. And first you'll see with the C2 grinder, with the hand grinder, the lowest setting that you can use where it'll still pull beans through consistently is at around six or seven clicks from zeroed out. And here's what that looks like. As you can see, this is definitely espresso fineness in terms of the grind size, how big each particle is. It's very fine and this is actually fine enough to clog up some espresso machines. And now we'll compare it to the finest setting, which is uh, basically one or zero on the Go Grinder. As you can see, it's very coarse and that's not fine enough at all for espresso. Maybe fine enough for mocha pot, but probably not. In fact, we are actually doing some of our pour overs with the V60 on that finest setting. And here they are in the same shot, so you can see in screen. This one is the Time More Hand Ground Grinder on the regular burr, and this is the from the Go Grinder with the EB burr. And you can see there's a huge difference between the two. The main use case for the Go Grinder is that you really want to be using it as a brew grinder, not as an espresso grinder. So let's take a moment to answer the question of why they went ahead and used this burr instead of the regular burr. And so I think the main choice why you wanted to use these titanium burrs, the EB burrs, was because of speed. But a grinder or any machine that's rotating a burr or trying to create work, when it's moving slowly, it requires more torque, right? And the grinder doesn't have that much torque in it. The motor is able to spin the burr, but not fast enough to do so much heavy lifting. So if it's too fine, it requires a lot more uh, twisting power to be able to turn it. And they use the EB burr, I think, to kind of, you know, match that engineering problem. It's kind of an elegant way of, of solving the problem and a good example of how a well, uh, a well designed machine is balanced, right? It has, it takes consideration for, uh, for its use case and it adjusts for that. So I find this to be a relatively well balanced device with the exception of some build quality concerns, which I'll get into right now. The receptacle or chamber, I find that coffee grounds get stuck in here a lot because of this little angle over here, right? So you can actually see right now, there's still coffee stuck in there. So retention is a problem. And when you're pouring coffee out into like your V60 or your brewer, uh, it still gets stuck on that rim. And that's kind of upsetting. And then when you tap it like this, stuff, stuff still gets stuck in there. So I don't like that. Um, also, this being a very stiff material, a very hard material, and this being a relatively soft plastic, we found that just screwing this in and out every day has resulted in a crack right there on our grinder. And we didn't drop it, we didn't do anything with it. We've just been using it as it was intended to be used. We've been using it for half a year, but we've been using it every day, once or twice a day. So that's a concern that you should know when you're buying it. So now we've talked about the grinder itself. Let's talk about the brewers. This is kind of the filter basket that they include in it. 
and it's arguable that this is not really a grounds receptacle you're supposed to use it for brewing coffee into and that's a bit of a problem because you're either um, brewing coffee into or you're putting the grounds into here which is not ideal if you're not gonna brew in it um, or if you're using the the smaller brother of, to this the go grinder without the brewing system then you're you're grinding directly into this thing the filter itself is not so stellar uh, one of the problems that I found is that it doesn't fit into a lot of brewing receptacles so it only really fits into here perfectly and we will make some coffee in here now just to show you what it's like All right, so now using the grinder as it was intended to be used, we've ground coffee into the filter, little filter basket that they have, and we're gonna brew some coffee in it. Now the thing that they've included in the top of the device is this distributor thing, and the idea is that if you don't have a nice pour over kettle, you can just use this, put it on top, and fill it up to the line. There's actually a 200 line and a 100. We put 10 grams of coffee into there. So with a 15 to one ratio, we want about 150 ml of water. But the idea is that this would distribute the water in kind of a rain pattern so that we can have like a nice, uh, evenly extracted coffee. Uh, will it work? Let's find out. So we've teared our scale. The water is going to be really hot, fresh off the boil, 99 or 100 degrees Celsius. I'm going to start my timer. I'm going to start by putting about 30 ml of water in there. Just let it drip down and hopefully it's nicely distributing the water down as you can see it trickle down from the top to the bottom from this little drip distributor. Now I've noticed that a little bit of water tends to stay in that distributor, but just a little bit, just kind of like what the, what the surface tension is holding in place. And you can see, take a peek, that it's nicely kind of rained down on the coffee down there in the dripper. So in that respect, it's doing a good job. Add some more water in, take us all the way up to 150 ml. Now, one of the things I really like about this distributor is that it's taking a lot of the, of the momentum out of the water drips as it's going down. So the water is fall, falling a very shallow amount, um, not from not so high a, a height, and that's creating very little agitation. You expect that there's gonna be a nice flow, a uh, nice gentle, flow of water through the grounds. Now, as you can see here, the water was relatively evenly distributed by the distributor, uh, but there is still a big divot in the middle, and that's because of the shape of the brewer. Three minute, 15 brew time, which is decent. Let's taste the coffee. Visually, the coffee looks really good. It doesn't look too oily, which sometimes happens with these mesh filters. It looks clean and clear. It doesn't look like there's any receptacles in there. It doesn't look cloudy. It's pretty impressive. All right, three minutes, 15. Let's see how the coffee tastes. It's a little bitter. Quite unbalanced, um, a little over extracted. Generally speaking, I don't find this to be a really desirable brewer um, for this little mesh bit. So I guess that's a big part of my review is that I like this thing. This part is great. The other bits of it, the receptacle, is not so great. The brew basket, this little mesh filter, is not so great either. Um, I do actually really like this thing because it's a fun toy. It's fun to have uh, a drip distributor that you can use for different things. And to round out the review, I actually want to show you how I've been using this around the studio and around the lab so that you can have some idea of kind of the fun of having all these different toys, how you can hack them together. So I'll show you that now. So while we're boiling the water, this is an AeroPress. We put the coffee inside there. That is 10 grams espresso fineness. In fact, the finest that our chestnut grinder would do. And then we put three AeroPress filters in the bottom to kind of slow down the, the flow of liquid through there. Expectation is around maybe 10 minutes to brew. So this is gonna be a little bit of a time lapse or we'll speed up the video for you guys. And then I'm just gonna put the drip distributor on top. It's a little bit of a challenge to balance it. But once you do, it's great. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pour 
all 200 ml of water into there. Now, because it is a high extraction brew, we're going to use a lot of water, it means we're going to have a high ratio, but we're expecting it to still be very sweet. And this distributor is going to do a good job of slowing down the flow of water and slowing down the agitation that comes from a kettle like this. Let's go. All right, so that's 200 ml of water inside the distributor. And as you can see from the front, I don't know if you can see, but no liquid has dripped down yet from the AeroPress into the carafe. So that's good. That means that all of the water is going to pass through all of the coffee, which is exactly what we want. So now all of the water has made it down. Almost all of it has made it out of the uh, drip distributor and it's all down here in the AeroPress and you're starting to see the coffee flow down through the bottom. It took about 90 seconds for that to happen. Uh, but now it's gonna take another five, six minutes for all of it to flow through. Again, a zero bypass brew, which means that they're gonna have a very high extraction. There's gonna be no water that didn't pass through the coffee. Um, one of the concerns that you usually have in this situation is that the coffee would be over agitated and therefore over extracted. But because we're using this drip distributor, we are gonna expect that, you know, it's not gonna be over agitated because all of the liquid kind of went in very gently into the top of the water. There is a big difference in the color of the liquid in the top layer and in the bottom layer of the, of the AeroPress, meaning that most of the water up here is just water and not really slurry. And it's slowly making its way through that bed of coffee. All right, so that was actually 12 minutes and 31 seconds, 20 to one ratio, or one is to 20 ratio. I always say it the other way around. And let's see what our yield is. Very interesting, 170, so one is to 17 output. Uh, but we only put 10 grams of coffee in there. So that's super interesting. The coffee absorbed pretty much all of the water it possibly could, which is about 2.5. First 12, 12 minutes, you expect the coffee to be very, uh, very uh, cold or have cooled down already, but it's still quite warm, quite sweet. High intensity, high sweetness. Considering it's a 20 to one ratio coffee, delicious. If you have the time to make a 12 and a half minute cup of coffee, this is one of my favorite ways to do it now. I like doing this kind of wacky stuff and playing in the lab. This is why I actually like the entire Go Grinder system. Because even though I have issues with the receptacle, even though I have issues with the dripper, the drip distributor is fantastic. Um, it's a great toy to have around. A trickle brewer is very expensive and you can kind of simulate or pretend like you have one. And so ultimately the question will always be, is this a good grinder? Uh, I think it's a great grinder for the price. I mean, you have that little crack there. That's kind of the sign of, of you know, it's quite disappointing in terms of build quality, in terms of mileage. Like we've used it every day, twice a day for half a year. And that's, that's kind of the first sign of wear and tear, uh, which means for personal use, it should be perfectly fine. I would describe what we, what we the way we use it as kind of heavy personal use. If you were making three cups a day with, with this grinder, then that would be relatively heavy personal use. We're still only charging the battery every two, uh, every two weeks, which is perfect, which is kind of great. And if you consider that this is, you know, a less than 10,000 peso, less than $200 grinder for the price, it's really hard to beat this, especially if you're using a uh, if you're using the little brother it doesn't have the dripper now is it worth spending the extra twenty dollars thousand pesos to get kind of the full set with the you know with the drip distributor and the the brewing device if you're a regular person this is not a great way to brew coffee this little mesh filter it's just not but if you want to have more toys that extra twenty dollars extra thousand pesos 
it's not a bad idea, right? You, you're not gonna find a distrib drip distributor that's around that price. So in conclusion, I do heavily recommend this device whether it's the Go Grinder or the Go Grinder 123, which is what this one is, I think it's one of my favorite devices by far in the last one or two years. I find that it, con it bridges the gap between very expensive grinders and what people actually need. If I was gonna give a star rating, let's say four stars out of five. And that's my review of the Time More 123 Go Grinder. Do you have this grinder? Have you tried it? Do you like the dripper? Am I wrong? Is that mesh filter really good? Do I just not know how to use it? I'd like to know in the comments down below and I'd like to hear your experiences. Also comment them down below so that other people who are looking into this grinder can also get that information. Let's go on this journey together. All right, I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. I wish you guys some great coffee. Peace.